Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. It is Tuesday. I hope you're all well and enjoying the start of your week. A little bit quiet in the world of Arsenal at the moment, um, but there's still plenty of stuff to talk about today. We'll go and look at what's going on. We'll talk about Declan Rice to start with. We spent a lot of time yesterday talking about Casido. I wanted to focus on Declan Rice a little bit today and how things might well move forward with that over the coming weeks. Um, uh, we'll talk about Fris, Ivan Frisnada, who's uh, a player Arsenal been interested in for a long time, with a little bit of talk about his release clause uh, being halved, which uh, could be of interest to Arsenal. We'll talk about Granite Xhaka, uh, the Emirates Cup. Uh, I wanted to spend a little bit of time as well talking about James Madison um, during this video. So, yeah, anything you hear or disagree with in this video, let me know, as always, in the comments below. Let's start with Declan Rice, shall we? Now, this is a big, big week. Uh, for Declan Rice. It's obviously a little bit quiet at the moment. There's lots of speculation, lots of chat about Declan Rice, but nothing's really moved forward. And that is because, of course, West Ham have got their huge, huge game on Wednesday night in the Conference League final against Fiorentina in Prague. Massive night for West Ham, massive night for the fans, huge night for Declan Rice as well, of course. And that is very much where his focus is right now. He said it, I think last week he did an interview in the preparation for the match with Sky and you know, he spoke about how his focus is purely on this. Now, you know, Declan Rice knows he's going to go this summer. West Ham know Declan Rice is going to go this summer. But nothing's going to happen. Nothing was ever going to happen before this game. So the rice, the the rice, <laughs> the race for Declan Rice is really going to start hop, hopping up after Wednesday night. Everyone's expecting this. Now, Arsenal, you know, we all know Declan Rice is Arsenal's priority. He's the player they want to sign this summer. And they're just waiting for Wednesday night. Once that's out of the way, expect things to really start to kick into action for this one. Um, you know, Arsenal preparing. They've done a lot of groundwork for Declan Rice. This isn't a new thing. This has been bubbling away behind the scenes for months now to try and get into a good position for when the summer hit, that they can move quickly and try and get this deal done. And it is going to start happening after Wednesday night. And... Um, you know, out of respect for West Ham, out of respect for David Wright, uh, Declan Rice, nothing's happened yet because the last thing they want to do is annoy West Ham ahead of this huge final, is to, you know, mess Declan Rice's mind up. You know, you can absolutely understand why West Ham just do not want anything to get in the way. This is a huge game. It's their first European final for 50-odd years. Um, the last thing they want is all the chat about their captain to distract them, to become a sideshow, and for everyone to going to be talking about it now West Ham know exactly what's going to be happening with Declan Rice this summer um, and for Arsenal it's just a case of positioning themselves making sure they're at the front of the queue and then once this final's out of the way then you can really sort of get into action and there's going to be competition we know that Bayern Munich very much in the running for Declan Rice um, you know strong reports in Germany that have been over here that they've chatted with Declan Rice um, Manchester United Manchester City even Chelsea all these clubs are uh, looking at the Declan Rice situation. But Arsenal have done a lot of work behind the scenes, as I said, to ensure that they are right there to be able to you know, move when they're able to move. And I was a lot of people talking in, the, in my comments yesterday and on social media, on Twitter, you know, why, why are Liverpool signing McAllister now? Why haven't we already made a move for Declan Rice? It's not as simple as that. If, I, if West Ham weren't in the Conference League final, I fully expect Arsenal would have made a move by now for Declan Rice. But you've got to, you've got to understand that you're going to be doing business with West Ham here for their captain, for their you know main man. You do not want to annoy them before those real sort of negotiations start to try and happen. It's the worst thing you could do. You'd be on the back foot from the start. And so, you know, Arsenal were never going to make a move for Rice until this game was out of the way, until there was nothing left on the sort of horizon um, for Rice and for West Ham to focus on. So, yeah, fully expect it to start really kicking off after Wednesday night. I really hope West Ham win on Wednesday night. I have to say, I've got I've got quite a lot of time for West Ham. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I really, I really do hope to win. I hope for Declan Rice, it'd be a perfect way for him to bow out at West Ham to lift a European trophy as captain. Um, I hope they win, and then I hope Arsenal get the deal done. As you all know, I'm very much in the in favour of Arsenal signing Declan Rice. I think it'd be a transformational signing for this team, and would take the club on to another level, and it would show, send out a message to the rest of Europe just how seriously Arsenal are now being taken by top-level players. So, fingers crossed. But yeah, I don't think you're going to have to be patient for too much longer. I think the move for Rice is going to happen pretty soon after Wednesday is out of the way. It's what Arsenal want, and I'm pretty sure it'll be what uh, Declan Rice would want as well. He won't want this to sort of 
drag on throughout the summer he would ideally like to get it sorted pretty quickly you would imagine so he can know where he's going to go he can go off on holiday have a bit of a holiday come back and be ready for pre-season to get used to his new teammates and to his new club um Moises Casido I spoke about quite a bit on yesterday's video obviously Chelsea are very heavily being mentioned with turning their attentions to him having missed out on um Ugarte has gone to PSG or in the process of going to PSG um my understanding of Casido, he's still very, very interested in Arsenal, but you know he's interested in all, all, all the top clubs. He's not going to shut himself off this summer in terms of just focusing on one club. He knows that there's going to be a lot of interest in him, um, so do his agents, and so they're not going to just you know focus on one club here. They're open to offers to speaking to people and finding out what is available to them uh, down the line. Now, there's no release clause in Caicedo's contract, so it's a little bit more difficult, of course, than what's gone on with Liverpool and McAllister, who got a fantastic deal there for an excellent player, but he had a release clause, they were able to take advantage of that. Weirdly, I don't know why, when they negotiated this new contract for Caicedo in January, there was no release clause um, included in it, because you know if they knew he was going to go or knew they were going to really try to push to go, you'd think that they'd be really pushing to have a release clause included. But from what I'm told, there is no release clause in it. Um, I mean, it puts Brighton in a very, very strong position. They're going to have lots of clubs after him. And, um, you know, we spoke yesterday, so I can't, I'm not going to go over it again in terms of whether Arsenal will make a move. We're just going to have to wait and see. You know, Rice is a priority. Whether Arsenal can do both, we'll have to see how the summer progresses. But, um, yeah, in terms of Caicedo, he is very, very interested still in Arsenal. The club he likes, he's made that very, very clear. And that hasn't changed since January. But, you know, he's open to offers from everyone. So we'll see how that one progresses. Ivan Frigionado is an interesting one. Obviously, a player Arsenal were very close to pushing the button for in January. They decided against it. He decided against moving as well. And his agents felt it would be the best thing for him to see the season out with Valladolid. You know, but um, Bruce Dortmund were in the running for him as well as Arsenal in January. There's been interest from other clubs as well in uh, over the sort of last couple of years as he's progressed through at Valladolid, known sort of amongst the football circles as a very talented young fullback. Um, he took a release clause of about 35 million, uh, which is a lot for, I think he's eight, still 18, might have just turned 19, I'm not sure. But it's still, it's a lot of money for a young fullback. Um, but because Valladolid had just been relegated, they went down on the final day of the season at the weekend. That release clause, according to reports in Spain, has now been cut to 17 million. It's halved because of their relegation. Whether that prompts Arsenal into really pushing the button for him this time in the summer, we'll have to wait and see. They didn't do it in January, they opted against it. Um, which probably a wise move considering his age. It's best for him to stay in Spain. When I look at him, though, um, I don't... You know, you're looking at how do you improve your squad. He's obviously a talented young player, but he's very young. He's still a teenager. He's never played in England before. Does he come in and improve your squad for the Champions League and for this season? I'm not sure he does. He's very much one for the future. He feels like if you sign him, you send him back out on loan again somewhere to play. So... Um, I'm not sure. You know, I don't. I don't think Arsenal's interest has gone any further than it has in January. It had in January. You know, I don't think at the moment this summer they've you know heavily in talks about trying to get this deal done. But he's just a player that they like and they've previously liked. And maybe this release clause being halved is going to help them with that. And they'll look at him and think, you know, only 17 million. That's one. That's a sort of. It seems mad saying that. Only 17 million. Uh, it's kind of an investment type signing. But um, we'll wait and see. I wanted to talk a little bit about James Madison. Now, you know, I, I don't know if Arsenal are in for Madison. I know they were really heavily linked with him a couple of years ago before Odegaard signed. Um, and he was a player they liked. They never bid for him, though, as far as I'm aware. I know there was a lot of reports that summer that they had and they'd been offering swap deals and all that. I, You know, I, I was never told that they'd bid for James Madison. It had never gone that far. I really like James Madison. I think he's a quality player. Um, and I think, yeah, obviously, he's going to go this summer. Leicester have been relegated. He's going to go somewhere kind of look at it and think he might fit the bill for someone like Newcastle, Spurs, uh, like him apparently, and you know, he'd be a good signing for them. He scores goals, he creates goals. They need that, they need a bit of creativity. I'd love him at Arsenal, <laughs> I have to admit. I think it'd be a really good signing for Arsenal. I don't think that Arsenal necessarily need him because they've got Smith Rowe and so it's kind of a similar situation to Mason Mount. Um so I don't think Arsenal, as much as I'd love him at Arsenal, I don't think he really needs to go. He, need, he needs to be one that Arsenal focus on. The same Yuri Tillemans, you know, as a player Arsenal really like. There's a couple of good 
a few good players on the market from Leicester after their relegation. Harvey Barnes as well, who I really, really like as a player. It'll be interesting to see where they go. But Madison, it just feels like, you know, I'd be excited by the signing of of, um, of James Madison for Arsenal. I don't think it'll happen. Like I said, this isn't one that I'm suddenly talking about. I just thought it'd be an interesting debate this in this video because um, I think he's a good player. I think he brings an awful lot to the team. I think he presses well. I think he, well, he can press well. I think he's... He's really creative. He's excellent on set pieces. He scores goals. And he's done that in a struggling Leicester team this season. So I think whoever gets James Madison this summer is going to sign a really, really good player. I don't think it will be Arsenal, like I said, because I don't think they necessarily need him. If you sign Rice, if you go for Caicedo, you've already got Smith Rowe. Jorginho's still at the club. Thomas Partey's still there. You just don't really need James Madison. But um, yeah, let me know if you disagree with that. Would you think Madison, if, do you think Arsenal should go push the boat out and try and get him? Let me know in the comments below. On Granite Xhaka, we're still waiting. Talk's still going on, as far as I'm aware, between Arsenal and Leverkusen to try and get this deal done. Nothing has happened. Nothing's been agreed. Um, there's lots of talk at the moment about Bayern Munich coming in and that potentially holding things up. I haven't heard that myself, but uh, it might be the case. That's what reports in Germany are suggesting anyway. I'm not sure, like I said, that's the case. Xhaka's on holiday at the moment. He's away. Um, I think then he's got he'll have international duty after that as well. So it might be one that drags on a little bit until the summer, uh, later on in the summer for confirmation. But as far as I'm aware, Leverkusen is still the sort of club that is it's looking more likely where he's going to go and nothing has changed on that. We're just going to have to um, wait to see how it sort of progresses over the next couple of weeks. Mikel Arteta, obviously at the end of the season, was very much keeping things under wraps. He wasn't ready to announce anything and this is reason why I suppose because it's still not being it's still not done as much as Xhaka is open to the move and wants to go and may well have agreed personal terms until the clubs agree a fee nothing can happen and at this moment in time my understanding is that nothing has been agreed between the two clubs and those talks continue so we'll wait and see with that interesting news Simon Collins at the standard I spoke about it in the last couple of days that I'd heard that it looked like um the Emirates Cup may well be played on a midweek um night because of the community shield and simon collins has now reported that the date for the emirates cup is when well penciled in at the moment it's not fully confirmed but he's saying it's been penciled in for wednesday august the 2nd against monaco i retweeted simon's story so go and have a look and have a read on that on uh, my social media so monaco penciled in for wednesday august the 2nd emirates cup on a midweek certainly a first for everything that will be before the community shield um against Manchester City which is the following weekend and then a weekend after that is the opening weekend of the Premier League season I think June the 15th the Premier League fixtures come out so we'll know who Arsenal kick the season off against then so that pretty much you know takes on the pre-season if that date is set in stone which I'm sure will be confirmed pretty soon you'll have Nuremberg in Germany that's still to be confirmed but that's my understanding of who Arsenal will be playing over there similar to last season after their sort of little training camp at the Adidas to HQ then they'll fly off to the States where they play the All-Stars, uh, United and Barcelona, then they're going to fly home. They'll have that Monaco game on Wednesday the 2nd, uh, and then they end their pre-season with that a Community Shield game against Manchester City at Wembley. And then, bang, it's into the, the, into the season proper. And so there you go, the summer's taking shape. You can look at, almost going to be able to see exactly what Arsenal are going to be doing. The key thing now is, can they get at least a couple of new signings in through the door in time for the start of pre-season training, which will be, about, I'm not sure the exact date yet, but it'll probably be at the end, around the end of this month or first week of July, um, something around that. It's all going to come around very, very quickly indeed. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Please do leave a comment below on anything you've heard with, agreed with, disagreed with, completely disagreed with as many of you do <laughs> let me know in the comments below and i'll go through them and try and reply as many as i possibly can thank you for watching everyone have a great day i'll speak to you soon